In this video, we're going to have a look at how to solve trig equations. Now, when you're faced with a question that asks you to solve a trig equation, the first thing you ought to do is to do your cast diagram, which is going to be a memory aid, which is going to help you to identify uh, in which quadrants your angles will lie. Okay, so we start off by saying that this is the angle zero, and as we work around, that's 90 degrees, that's 180 degrees, that's 270 degrees, and that takes us back around to 360 degrees. Now, within each quadrant, we know that uh, in this quadrant, all are positive. In this one, sine of angles between 90 and 180 are positive. We know that in this one, tan of angles between 180 and 270 are positive. And in this quadrant between 270 and 360, we know that cos of all angles in this quadrant are positive. Okay. Now, I also like to draw what looks a wee bit like a saltire cross. Okay. So it's closer to the horizontal line than it is to the vertical line. And you'll see why in a wee minute. And that will help us to uh, decide what our actual solutions will be. Now, all of your trig equations will, all of, all of your trig equation questions will have a specified domain, a range from which you can take your answers. And usually, most questions will end up uh, looking for more than one answer. Okay, so let's have a look at this first question here. Okay, you're asked to solve sine x equals root 3 over 2, and your domain is angles between 0 and 360 less than or equal to 360, or greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so first things first, let's do our diagram, okay? So if I do that, we'll say S, A, T, C, put in your angles. For all the time it takes, it will stand you in good stead further down the line, okay? And then if we do our cross, that will help us then to get things right. Now, the first thing you've got to do is work out, well, what angle, what acute angle gives you root 3 over 2 when you find the sign of it. Now, you should know yourselves from your exact values that it's 60, okay? So let's just construct the triangle just here, just to remind ourselves. Now, if all you remember is that sign 30 is a half. If that's all you remember, then you can easily construct this triangle because you know that you've got 90 and 6 and 30, so the other one's going to be 60. Now, if you said that sine 30 is a half, that means that's 1, that's 2, and by Pythagoras, that gives you root 3. Now, looking at that triangle, we can see that it is sine of 60, which is root 3 over 2. There's your opposite, there's your hypotenuse. So we know that inverse sine of root 3 over 2, we know that that is 60. Now, before we do anything else, notice that sine of your angle is positive. So sine of my angle is positive, I'm going to have a solution in this quadrant and in this one. Now, that angle is 60. Now, in fact, each of these little angles are 60. Now, I'm going to have a solution here. So my first solution is 60, which we mentioned. My other solution is going to be here, in this quadrant, and it's going to be 60 short of 180, so 60 less than 180. So my second solution is 120 degrees. And that's me done. I've got a solution in each of the quadrants which I have ticked. We ticked these two because sine of our angle is positive. Okay, and that's you done. Sometimes trig equation questions will involve a little bit of uh, rearranging before you can solve them. So here, what we'll do is we'll add 1 to both sides. So we'll just declutter to the left-hand side. That leaves us with 5 cos x equals 1. And then if we divide both sides by 5, we end up with cos x equals 1 fifth. Okay, now I can do my diagram. <clears throat> and if I do that, I'll just do my lines first of all. Then we'll put in our angles. So we'll say at 0, 90, 180, 
270 back round to 360. Now, if I put in my S, A, D, and C, now, look at what I've got. Cos of my angle is positive, so I'm going to have a solution here and here. I'm going to have a solution between 0 and 90, and a solution between 370, sorry, 270 and 360. So, this time we're going to have to use a calculator, because we don't know... Uh, what inverse cos of one fifth is. So using the calculator, I find that inverse cos of one fifth is 78.5. Now, that is my first solution, okay? 78.5. Now, this little angle in here is also 78.5, this acute angle here. So one solution, as we said, is there. So that's 78.5. My other solution is going to be here. So it's going to be 78.5 short of 360. Okay. So what I do to get my second solution is I do 360 and I take away 78.5. And that then leaves me with two solutions. One in each of the quadrants which I had ticked previously. And my second solution is 281.5. And that's that Lig equation solved using a domain that ranges from 0 to 360. Okay? Let's have a look at this one. Now, this one involves a bit of uh, rearranging as well. So we'll take 1 away from both sides. That leaves me with 3 tan x equals negative 1. Then dividing both sides by 3, I end up with tan x equals negative one third. Okay? Now, up until now, we've ended up with sine x equals something positive, or tan x, or cos x equals something positive, uh, but here, the tan of my angle is something negative. So that's going to change our approach a wee bit. So, let's have a look, first of all, at what we are going to do. Now, putting in my angles, I can now get ready to start. Okay? Now, if tan of the angle had been positive, I would take this quadrant and this quadrant. So because it's negative, I just do the opposite. I take this quadrant and this quadrant. Because I know that tan of any angle in here is going to be negative in this quadrant. And I know that tan, uh, cos of any angle, the tan of any angle, sorry, in this quadrant is going to be negative as well. So what I need to do is I need to work out the acute angle that's going to slot in here. Now, I do that by ignoring the negative. So all I want to do to get the acute angle is do inverse tan of not negative a third, but positive one third. Now, if I do that, I end up with uh, an answer of 18.4. 18 18.4 degrees. Now, that's not one of my solutions, okay? That's not one of my solutions. All I'm wanting to do here is find the acute angle. So 18.4 is the size of that, and it's the size of that. Now, I've got one solution there, and I've got one solution there. Now, to finish things off, using my diagram, what I'll say is one solution is going to be short of 180. So it's 180 minus 18.4. The other solution is in this quadrant, and it's a bit short of 360. So it's 360 minus 18.4. And I finish it off by saying that my two solutions are 161.6 degrees, and the other one is 341.6 degrees. And that's me finished. And these are the two angles which would give you uh, a tan value of negative 1 over 3. Okay. Now, try these yourselves, okay? And just pause the video as each question comes up and have a bash at it yourself. Okay. Now this first one, you're expected to do without a calculator. Now we mentioned one of the exact value triangles you should know uh, previously. Here's the other one. Okay. Now if you remember, all you did was you took a square, which was one unit by one unit. You chopped it in half. It ended up with 
we ended up getting a right angle triangle whose hypotenuse was root 2, and the angles are 45. So, cos of 45 is what gives you 1 over root 2. Okay. So, I can just start off by saying that x equals inverse cos of 1 over root 2, and that is 45 degrees. Now, before I can go any further, what I'll do is I'll do my diagram, just to keep us wide. I'll do our lines first. Put in our angles. 0, 90, 180, 270, and 360. And we'll say S, A, T, C. Now, look at what you've got. Cos of your angle is positive. That means the solution there and there. Okay. Now, we've already worked out the acute angle is 45. So one of my solutions is going to be in there. So it's 0 plus 45. The other solution is going to be here. So it's 360 minus 45. So my two solutions are x uh, is equal to 45. And 360 minus 45. So I end up with 45 and 300 and 15 degrees. Okay, so I hope you got on well with that. Now the next question we'll look at will involve a, a wee bit of manipulation. So again, pause the video, see how you get on, and check back to see if you're correct. Now, rearranging this, adding 1 to both sides, gives me 4 tan x equals 1. Dividing by 4 gives me that tan of my angle x is 1 quarter. Okay. Now, doing my diagram, putting in my angles. Now, for all the time it takes, it's well worth putting in all the details because it reduces the risk of you making a mistake. So, S, A, T, C. Now, what have we got? Tan of an angle is positive. So we take off these two quadrants. So I know one of my solutions is going to lie between 0 and 90. I know another solution is going to lie between 180 and 270. So what I need to do is I need to work out the size of the acute angle. And I do that with my calculator by finding out inverse tan of 1 quarter. Now, doing that, I find that it's 14. So 14 is actually my first solution. Now, my other solution lies beyond 180. Okay, notice how the angles get larger and we're going beyond 180. So it's going to be 180 plus 14. So my two solutions are for the domain of 0 to 360, we have 14 degrees and 194 degrees. Okay. One last question for you to try. See how you get on with this one. Pause the video and check back later on. Now again, we need to rearrange this a wee bit. So take away 4 from both sides. They cancel. We end up with 5 sine x equals negative 4. Divide everything by 5. We end up with sine x equals negative 4 over 5. Do our diagram, <coughs> our memory aid. Let's put in all the lines just now. So 0, 90, 180, 270, back around to 360, S, A, T, C. Uh, now, what have we got? Sine of my angle is negative. So that means that we have to tick here and here. So you're expecting a solution between 180 and 270, and another solution between 270 and 360. So remember what we do. Because it's the acute angle we want to find, first of all, we're going to ignore the negative, And we're just going to find inverse sine of positive 4 fifths. Now, when I do that, I find that my acute angle is 53.1. So 
So that means that this angle here is 53.1, and this is also 53.1. Now, what do we do? Well, we just add 53.1 to 180, and we take 53.1 away from 360, because you know you've got a solution there and there. Now, that means my two solutions are going to be 180 plus 53.1, And secondly, 360 minus 53.1. So that leaves me with solutions of 233.1 and secondly, 306.9 degrees. And that is how you solve trig equations. And I hope that was helpful. Okay, so remember your memory aid, include all the details and it will stand you in good stead. Okay?